Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. As we stand here today before you, we are but a small piece of this larger delegation that return year after year to plead the case that the Sahrawi people are not only self-determined, but have the wish and the right to be self-reliant while supporting freedom for all. Now that we are firmly one decade, 10 years into a new millennium, a new century, we are once again reminded of the reality that peaceful solutions must be rewarded and violence abolished. In this new century, we are faced with yet another reality, the reality of energy demand by an ever-expanding world. The Sahrawi embrace both these truths and combined offer the ability to participate on the world stage more viably, more feasibly. The possibility that this reality come to fruition can be thanks to the efforts of solar energy. Solar energy on more widespread use is in keeping with the Sahrawi socially responsible mores and values. Solar energy can offer the Sahrawi people the same possibilities as many communities living off the grid around the world. The possibilities of clean water to charge cell phones and increase communications. The possibilities of solar ovens to refrigerated medicines. First, the most urgent need is clean water. The Sahrawi's own wells are currently closed due to health reasons. At the moment, the majority of camps use tankers to transport water from general wells. However, there is a shortage in these water tankers. Quite simply, they are too expensive and few NGOs can supply them. Pumps and purification systems can be powered by solar charges created by Solar One at very viable price points, and most importantly, can be maintained by local hands. They can also produce smaller units for single family homes, supplying the possibility of LED lighting and more. One of the greatest gifts is the innovative spirit of man. Currently, there are products and training by the Solar Energy Foundation, winner of the 2009 Ashton Award for electrification of rural areas. Their daughter company, Sun Transfer, designs products which are high quality and affordable. Their ST2 is just one example of what is being utilized in Ethiopia. It is water and dust proof, allowing for uses in solar light and cell charging in the wettest or driest places. Another advantage is many of the new products can be assembled locally, allowing for the extension of commerce. Companies like SolarAid, a British international development charity that promotes the use of solar energy to help reduce global poverty and climate change, have been able to teach and sell unassembled small-scale solar panels for radios, lights, and more. The Ungaro Youth Group in Mizuzu City, Malawi, is just one group benefiting from this solar explosion. Solar ovens can be built for under $1 using simple supplies of aluminum and cardboard or a larger scale of $100 by companies like Solar Oven Society with projects in progress for Afghanistan and Ethiopia. Currently, the people in the camps are using gas in bottles from Algeria. Every family has an allotment of one cooking gas bottle per month. This lasts for 15 days. The rest of the month, they have to buy it or go without. Imagine if the families have more children or guests. It has long been established that in eradicating poverty and improving self-reliance, solar is clearly the leader for off-the-grid communities such as the Sahrawi camps. How can you deny the Sahrawi people this? Or must the Sahrawis remain isolated cut off from possibilities of growth and freedom. Why should they not be part of the United Nations Millennium Development Agenda for alleviating extreme poverty by 2015? The decision that lies before you is not one of bureaucratic judgment and vision, but rather one of moral judgment and vision. Thank you for your time. <laughs>